Hey guys, welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to bring you up to speed on the uh, designs I have going for the chassis for the Baja Bug. Um, and I just want to go over that, show you some changes that I made since the first video that I put out. And uh, same rules apply before. Uh, I'd like some of you guys to take a look at it and if you have any suggestions, let me know so that I can make those changes before I actually build the chassis. So let's take a look. So what you're looking at right now is this is the original chassis that I drew up and uh, basically the, the feedback that I got was that the top portion here wasn't strong enough, it didn't have enough support. And with that feedback and with me looking at it, I decided that's probably correct, so I needed to address that. So this is what I call my version 1 chassis. So if we go to the version 2 chassis, in the version 2 chassis you'll see a couple of changes. The first change is this connection point back here, I actually moved back um, about 8 inches. And then the distance up here I made shorter. So it gives this back support piece more of an angle, giving it a little bit more of a triangulation into the, uh, the main hoop here. And then in addition to that, I did add a support um, up at the front here. And I also made some changes to the door bar here, rather than just running right into this pillar and then this point 45-ing down into there. I gave this like door pillar a little kick so that I could add this support going up to the windshield. And then I added two triangular cross braces in here to tie it all in together. Um, so I think I'm, I'm pretty confident with that. I think that makes this, this top section pretty strong. Uh, so at this point, I think I'm going to be moving forward with that. I then also carried some supports down into the engine area here. Um, and then if you'll notice, right around here is where the drive shaft is going to come out. Right where this comes in is right where the motor mounts are going to be. So what I'm trying to do here is tie some of the chassis right into where the motor mounts are going to be and then have other triangulated pieces coming down here connecting to where the transaxle is going to be so that they're all you know rigidly triangulated together. And then um, I got a little bit more, let's call it advanced, on this drawing and I added some uh, ERW or electric weld tubing on here. So what you're looking at here is the uh, gray tubing is DOM, it's like 095 DOM tubing, and the pink tubing is just electro weld uh, of a little bit thinner, I think this is 14 gauge. Just so that I've got the DOM in the areas where I think I need the most strength, and then everything else is ERW. Then with that basis of design, the next thing I wanted to do was uh, create a build platform, or a platform that I was going to actually um, like build the chassis off of and originally I was just going to make a, a nice level flat surface but then when I thought about it I figured with this software why not just take my bottom profile and create a build platform off of that that was the exact same dimensions of the chassis so with that I built this and this is a this is the exact profile of the bottom of the chassis and I'm going to make this out of inch and a half by inch and a half square tubing. And because I'm making this out of inch and a half tubing, I'll be able to actually cut the pieces and lay them perfectly on top of this to build the chassis. What this is going to allow me to do is the first thing I'll do is just build this base and I won't even add the inside at the beginning. I'll just add basically the outside profile. And then I can take that out to my bug right now and I can actually hold it up underneath the chassis and really start checking a lot of my dimensions to see if they're correct. Then the next drawing that I have is this is my version 2 chassis but I'm calling this the skeleton because I've taken out most of the structural support. Um, and what this is, this is supposed to be basically just a down and dirty chassis that will get me <clears throat> the main structure um, and this is what I'll build initially. Once I build the, the build platform, I'm going to build this on top of it and I can use this to really fine tune some of the details. Things like, I'm not 100% sure if I've made the top high enough 
or if it's too high. I'm not 100% sure how the front clip is going to fit onto this chassis. Uh, so these are things that I can start um, with this version and build this version up first. And as I'm building it, I can check fitment of the fiberglass one piece front end. I can put seats in there and I can see how the elevation of the roof feels um, and, and usually and really just use this to figure out if this you know is, is going to work. Okay, now what we're looking at here is this is the version two chassis. And what I'm doing in this profile is I'm trying to get an idea with with scale um, as to whether or not this chassis is actually going to work. I'm adding I'm adding paneling and I'm trying to like this the chassis is to scale and the components in here like the radiator and the engine and the transaxle those are all to scale. As far as the side paneling, this is how I would like it to come out, but this is kind of just a rendering at this point. Um, I'm just trying to get a feel for how things would look with the chassis. And I wanted to put the, the paneling on there because that you know does affect how it looks. And I, I know that looks shouldn't be, you know, they're not the, the end all be all, but I do actually want to build this so that it's um, aesthetically pleasing to me. So to a certain degree, some of that is being taken into consideration on my design. But let me highlight some things that I'm trying to achieve here so that when you guys are looking at this, um, you, you can possibly see what I'm talking about. First and foremost, this engine and this transaxle are pretty accurate dimensional wise. They're not, you know, real granular, but they have the basic shapes. The radiator up here, what I'm trying to do, because this is a bug that I want to be I don't know if I should call it a bug anymore. This is a Baja that I want to be able to drive on the street. So I'm trying to leave a gap up here, right here above the radiator, so that I can have a rear view mirror mounted in the uh, driver's area and actually see out over the top of the radiator. That's one thing that I'm, I'm trying to maintain is, is some visibility out the back. Um, for two things, well, I guess mainly, I just I want to be able to see out the back. Um, I right now in this version I do like the fact that it's pretty wide open in the back areas here um, that will that would be nice for on the trails but I also might draw a rendering with some side plates that would possibly have some scoops feeding some air into that radiator um, if I do that I'll still probably only take these up as high as the radiator so that when I'm driving, I can, like if I'm, you know, driving on the road, merging with traffic and whatnot, I can look over the tops of that and have some visibility. But those will be, those will be some things that I'll just be experimenting with once I actually have the chassis drawn up. The back here is, is pretty accurate. You can see I've got my two fuel cells slipped in the back here. Um, the reason that I'm going with two fuel cells here is it allows me to have the shifter and wiring harness and, and all sorts of things run up through the center of the chassis um, and have me have full access to it. So what I think I'm going to do is have basically have two independent fuel cells. Each one will have its own fuel sending unit and its fuel pump and be kind of like an independent cell. And then from the cockpit, I'll be able to adjust or pick one or the other. One of the main things that I'm definitely designing in this chassis is the fuel cells are not in the cockpit with the driver. So in the chassis here, there is pan there's a paneling on the floor here and there's a like a paneling firewall. So the seats will follow the contour of this roll bar here and they'll just miss this back area. And then um, I'll actually, if everything works out like I've drawn it, I'll have some decent storage area back here where I'll probably put you know, some toolkits um, and whatnot, maybe a cooler, um, I don't know. And then I've got the wing drawn up here. The wing is just because I, I like the wing, but the main purpose of the wing, at least so far, is it gives me this uh, flat area up here on the back, and this is where I'm going to put my brake lights, my turn signals, backup lights, um, things like that. And I still, if I put these 
these side pods on, I still might try and make an area where I can install some lights on the side pods. But in addition to that, I definitely want to have most of my brake lights, turn signals, and all that up here on the wing for really good visibility, um, especially for driving in traffic around town. Have not done much with the front. Um, there's really not too much I can do up here because I can't draw the fiberglass front end and I can't, I don't really know exactly where my shock absorbers are going to line up with all this. So when I do actually construct this, I will add details to this when I do the front A-arm suspension. In the back here, this, the transaxle, this, the hole there represents my uh, CV flanges on the transaxle and those are in the correct position. I've got them as low as I can possibly get them. You'll notice I even have a little bit of the transaxle sticking down through the chassis, which is exactly how it is on my chassis now. And I'll just build a uh, skid plate that will protect that. But if I get those CVs as low as possible, it allows me to get as much droop as possible. Now, one thing that I have realized I've backed myself into a corner a little bit here is I've added uh, some aluminum paneling right here underneath the radiator and I've got this bar running across but I believe right around here somewhere is where my rear shock absorbers are going to come into play so most likely when I build this chassis I won't put this bar in yet and then I'll install the rear suspension and I'll figure out where my shock absorbers need to connect and then I will update this to reflect that and then I think I did leave provisions here this portion of the chassis is is perfectly straight and flat so that if somebody was building this chassis for a swing arm as long as they strengthened this area back here they could connect a swing arm to that and then they might have to change some of the paneling around here but there would be enough structure up here that they could add some support to get trailing arm shock absorbers as well so even though mine is a arm I, I am considering that if somebody else wants to build this, there will be some provisions for trailing arm because I think that's what most, most people would be designing. So really that's it for the chassis design. I do believe it's very much what my end product is going to be. I am putting it out here now so that if you guys look at it and really see something that you think dramatically needs to be changed, go ahead and hit me up in the comments and let me know. Um, I did buy, I did purchase the material to make that build platform, so I'm actually going to start um, doing that today, probably right after this video. If you guys have some comments, please get them out there so that I can take things into consideration. I can, I can still make any changes. That's with the software. That's actually really easy. Um, same rules as before. I'm making all this so that I can share it with you guys. Um, I've drawn up the base platform and the software gave me all the miter cuts and the lengths and all of that stuff. So it's definitely, at least so far, making what should be the fabrication process much simpler. We'll see. This is As soon as I start building this base platform, that's going to be my actual first build off of the information that the software gives me. So that'll be interesting. I will share all of these files with you guys. I've already passed them out to a couple of uh, subscribers, viewers. But bear in mind, this chassis that I'm drawing right now is, um, it hasn't been built yet. So I most likely am going to make some changes to it. So if you get the chassis now, I, I don't know how, how correct it is. Once I build it and I, as I make actual in the field changes, I'll make those changes on the software and then as I you know find out where things like the shock absorbers are going to go I will be adding supports for those and I'll add those in the software as well so when I actually build the chassis my final design should be um, complete and more accurate than the drawings that I have now but either way uh, it's Saturday morning and I'm really excited to go start fabricating the uh, build platform so I'm gonna go do that now I just wanted to get a video out here first to show you guys what I've been working on in the last couple of weeks and so that you guys can get some feedback back to me so thanks for watching the video guys hopefully uh, it's motivating you to go out work on your own projects and hopefully I see you in the next video take care